price should not be the only thing you consider when choosing a heating and air conditioning contractor. Now I wanted to shoot a video and show you why that's the case. My wife and I moved into a home just over a year ago with a system that was put in by a contractor who consequently only cared about price. I knew this was the case buying the home and we must have looked at 30 or better homes most of which were all built within the last 10 years in the area and I can tell you from what I saw pretty much across the board the, the heating and cooling systems were just absolutely horrible. I knew this going into this home purchase but I also knew that because of the design and layout of the home uh, this was one of the easier homes to fix. So I'm going to show you some video and point out some things that are basically subpar uh, to put it lightly and I'm also in the process of fixing these things now and I'll keep you up to date and let you know how things are going. I'll show you some before and after video and explain why there's an advantage to having a properly designed and installed heating and cooling system. So I'm out here at the condensing unit outside. As you can tell it's quite loud. I hope you can hear this. Why is it so loud? Well there's several reasons for that. The main reason being that it was installed originally on an unlevel pad and over time through vibration and whatnot it's got increasingly louder. Now this is something we deal with on a daily basis in our home but it is so loud that it makes it very hard to sleep at night. And let me just show you this unit. I, I have leveled it up somewhat and actually it's a lot quieter now than it was at one point. But uh, here's the unit. The dents it here in the grill in the, the fan guard are actually from icicles falling on top of the unit. Because we also have no rain gutter over this unit. Here's the plastic pad it was installed on, which like I say has been leveled up somewhat. Um, and I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but besides the weeds in my backyard, I also have an iced up system. Now, this system, because of the ductwork and the way it was ran, will ice up regardless. Um, I suspect a leak, but I haven't really searched for one because, like I said, I'm in the process of removing this system entirely. Um, in fact, I poured a new concrete pad next to this one. And as you can see, here's my new condensing unit, a much higher efficiency unit. This is a 10 sear. And this is the Bryant 187 up to 18 sear. That's one of the ways they reach the sear rating is the larger coil capacity transfers a lot more heat. Now you'll see, I did a concrete, did pour a concrete pad here. Does that mean that your condenser should be on a concrete pad? Not necessarily. You know, if this pad were installed properly and the ground leveled and compacted underneath it so that it didn't settle over time, it would have been perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm in my crawl space where the shoddy work really abounds. Um, the crew who installed this system took absolutely no pride in their work whatsoever. Um, I'm sure that's a product of the company they worked for only caring about one thing and that's speed. I don't know how well you can see this. Let me move over just a little bit and maybe you get a better idea of how the flex runs in this house have been routed. Um, it's quite funny actually, the, I don't know if you could see it in that other shot, but there's actually a track pipe or CSST gas line run and strapped with one of these runs. Um, 
really interesting to me. That's something I had never seen before and something I would never do. Uh, right here I'm in the process of redoing, replacing the ductwork. And these are the sheet metal trunk lines. As you can see, uh, they're sealed on every joint as well as the takeoffs. Not the prettiest sealing job, but what matters is that they are sealed because every bit of air lost down here in this crawl space is air that I'm not getting upstairs and my system has been designed to deliver the right amount of air to the living space with sealed ductwork. So anywhere that air is leaking, it means it's costing me more money to operate this system. Um, this is actually a two zone side of the system. I, I'm putting installing actually a four zone system and that's to overcome some of the other issues we have in the home because of the different exposures throughout the day from the sun. Um, these are both supply trunk lines. One's going to the east side of the house and one going to the west side of the house. One of the main reasons that we're zoning the home is because we have a bonus room. And if you have a bonus room and it's not zoned, you'll know what I'm talking about. They are notoriously hot in the summertime and cold in the winter. Because where's your thermostat? It's on the main floor. As soon as it's satisfied, it shuts off and you roast in the summertime. So, we are installing a zone system to overcome this. Now this is just, you know, any professional, in fact, probably the people who installed this system can take a look at this and tell you that this really is not kosher. Um, all of the sharp bends and kinks and lengths of this, these flex lines are just absolutely ridiculous. And it's no wonder that my system freezes up, never shuts off, never comes down to temperature in the hottest part of the summer. Um, and that's the reason why our electric bills are extremely high. Now, you'll see a big pile over here on the floor. This is all of the return air duct that I've already removed from the home. Right now we're just using the crawl space as a plenum temporarily while we fit up this uh, duct renovation job. But as you can see, there are hundreds and hundreds of feet of mostly six, some eight inch flex. Um, with the length and all the bends in the flex, there were runs, return air runs, that were over 200 feet of equivalent length in this crawl space. And I would wager that the supplies are even longer than that. Here's where my supply trunk lines come together. It's kind of dark, I hope you can see this well, but there will be turning vanes in these fittings here. And then it branches off into two trunk lines on each side. Now right here, that short piece of duct on each section after that Y, you can see there's a, a zone damper. Now that zone damper actually opens and closes according to the heating and cooling requirements of that particular zone. So each zone has its own thermostat. Now, if this zone is calling for cooling and none of the others are, this damper will open and every other damper will remain closed. Hmm. If this zone is satisfied and another zone is calling for heating or cooling, this will close, the system will begin or continue to run and another damper will open. Now, the heart of the system, right around this corner, is right here. There's probably no less than a hundred things I could point out that are that are wrong with this system. Um, but let's let's look at some of the finer points. Uh, 
as you can see, the flex runs run all over the place and just dart in and out. And keep in mind, this is the finished product. How this passed inspection, I'm really not sure. Uh, probably a product of the housing boom we experienced here in the last five years. I'm sure that you can see right here that they actually only ran about two feet of trunk line from the coil where they tapped in with flex runs. Now keep in mind this is the farthest end of the house and we're a good oh, 40, 40 feet in a straight line to the farthest run. Well, the farthest run doesn't run in a straight line. In fact, it's right there. I don't know how well you can see that. But it goes up from there and dips and dives several times before ever reaching the other side of the house. Um, this is so bad, in fact, that, like I say, even with all of the return air removed, we're still icing up. Um, what I really don't like about this system is the placement of the filter, or not so much the placement of the filter, but the type of filter system they have. Uh, any filter's good, don't get me wrong. Your system needs a filter. It keeps your coils and your heat exchangers from getting dirty and really improves the efficiency of your system as long as they're changed regularly. But as you can see, I actually added these temporarily, these rails. Those were not in place before for the system. The thing that's amazing to me is that they took the time to seal the ductwork. You can see the mastic around the takeoffs on this plenum. But on the supply, it's another story. These are huge, huge air leaks and you can actually see the dust buildup that has worked its way through the system around where the air is leaking. That is a huge, huge energy loss. We don't have continuous insulation on the suction line. Now our area is pretty dry and that's not always a huge issue, but in the in the spirit of good workmanship, that just does not fly. Um, you can see where they routed the hose here from the condensate pump is pinched. Now at some point, this is likely to kink, and I'm sure that it's stressing the pump in this, this condensate pump so that it will shorten its life. Speaking of shortening the life, all of these things that I'm pointing out will shorten the life of your equipment. So, shoddy workmanship and a cheap, I don't mean inexpensive, but cheap installation, installation really does cost you more in the long run. It costs you more in higher utility bills, it costs you more in system maintenance, system repairs, and will also make it so that you have to replace your system sooner. Now, another thing that I don't really care for about this system is the fact that they actually laid the furnace and the coil on top of plastic condenser pads. When I get this torn out, you see it saw the new location of the furnace where I stuck my head up inside the duct. These will go and I'll have to find another use for them. As you can see, the system was installed in November of 2007. So when I moved into the home, this system was not even two years old yet. And, you know, for a person who doesn't understand what's going on, they just put up with this type of thing. And they, the contractor may send someone out to fix it, but they try band-aid fixes. And over time, they forget about these homeowners, conveniently. And they learn to live with it, unfortunately. So, if you're experiencing comfort issues in your home, call a reputable contractor who will listen to what you have to say. 
Anyway, this is a small tour of some of the many things that are wrong with my system. Here, I'll let you know how things are going. I'll show you the finished product, and I think you'll all be pleased.